Hey everybody, it's JJ and we're back again for another ASUS PC DIY hardware stream. Hopefully everybody is having a good uh, start to the day, uh, well, or maybe the afternoon, wherever you might be, or maybe it's a little bit later in the day. Uh, regardless, thanks for joining us here on the ASUS PC DIY stream. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here in terms of the Dash F. So the first thing you're going to see if you compare this again to the prior generation is going to be quite a bit of a robust IO stack on the board. So you've got four, then you've got another four, and then you have another two. So that's already going to give you 10 ports, right? So again, four, eight, 10 and then 12 so we've got one type a port and we've got one type c port right there so that's 12 ports that's a big upgrade compared to b450 and b550 base generation one difference though if let's say we were to compare this to again the x670 e chipset is you would be looking at quite a bit more high speed ports um, you have four usb2 ports and that's not necessarily a loss right i think the total number of ports is still extremely valuable because if you're plugging in different things like peripherals like you know your keyboard your mice um, even many cameras things along those lines you know printer they're all going to be using usb2 they don't benefit from having necessarily a high speed base port and you still have lots of high speed because you have a 20 gigabits port right here right uh excuse me a 10 gigabits port you have a 20 gigabits port and then you've got five gigabits ports right so you still have quite a bit of high speed base connectivity and that 20 gigabits port that's here keep in mind that essentially that's equal to four of these ports if you were to put like a USB C hub on there you could go ahead and, and uh drop that down to essentially having five uh usb excuse me five gigabit usb ports right um so that excuse me <laughs> four five gigabit space ports right if you wanted to go ahead and uh, even add more usb uh, just from that one port alone so a lot of flexibility still in terms of the bandwidth that you have there um, you maintain of course high speed based networking but that's nothing new we've had that now for multiple generations 2.5 gigabit networking wi-fi 6e you have of course the display output support which is going to be great if you want to take advantage of the integrated radeon graphics core that's present on the 7000 series cpus and then your multi-channel audio out now all the ATX based boards uh, you guys are already familiar but I'll go ahead and show it to you guys here in case somebody is maybe surprised by it um, I will go ahead and just show it to you quickly but all of the ATX boards the dash F the dash E and the dash A and the ROG Strix lineup will have the Q release ejection design so that means that you can go ahead and just press that button to easily be able to eject the graphics card right you'll see that the dash F is also going to support up to three M.2 based SSDs and all three of those M.2 SSDs have their own heatsink and you're going to have PCI Gen 5 for the primary M.2 SSD and you're also going to get PCI Gen 5 for the primary physical by 16. So this board will give you the flexibility of having PCI Gen 5 support for essentially both of those devices. Okay, um, You have an upgrade in terms of the ARGB connectivity so this kind of brings it standard with all the other kind of current generation boards where we have three ARGB headers and yes you can do multiplexing on that if you want to be able to go ahead and attach you know um, an ARGB splitter or a hub and you want to run three four five devices from one header you can entirely do that uh, you've got quite a bit of fan headers on there including an aio pump header which will also be on the board there's also an opt opt temp sensor on there for those that may be maybe trying to go for like maximum um, you know sweet spot value and maybe do overclocking right uh, excuse me overclocking and water cooling on this type of board and you want to go with something like that uh, i know some of the water cooling enthusiasts like to use the opt temp sensor that is on the motherboard you have, of course, one RGB lighting zone on the board, and then you get the Supreme Effects Savvy Tech uh, amp, uh, which combines there with the ALC 4080 and the Sonic Studio 3 software suite. Now, do you even mind that when I talk about the audio suite and the hardware design, that is where there's going to be a clear difference between the tough gaming models and the ROG Strix models, right? The ROG Strix models have the upgraded ALC 4080 with the Savvy Tech amp and that more dynamic and richer software suite with Sonic Studio 3 compared to the tough gaming isolated audio design, right? Now, one other thing that's also going to be consistent on all of the ATX SKUs, but I'm calling it out right here. So all, again, ATX SKUs that I'm going to be talking about, the ROG Strix, the Tough Gaming series, and the Prime series will all feature support for Thunderbolt 4 via our Thunderbolt 4 add-in card. So while you won't have 40 gigabit space connections on here, you will have the ability that if you want to add that to the motherboard, you can go ahead and pick up the card, drop that in there, and then be able to have that ultra high speed based connectivity. Now we don't put that on there because of course it would considerably increase the cost of the motherboard. And the reality is most users don't have more than five gigabit based devices in terms of high speed based devices. But if you want to be able to have that, 
then we will have you covered there. If you want a motherboard that does have uh, essentially, you know, Thunderbolt 4 on board, USB 4, right? Then you would take a look at the ProArt board when we get to that one. That will be the only model within the B series lineup that will have uh, essentially that specification natively on the motherboard. Or of course, you could look at to one of the higher end base chipsets like in the X670E lineup of motherboards where we have multiple models that do feature uh, USB 4 specification natively on the motherboard, okay? I think that wraps everything up, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the stream. Again, if anybody has any follow-up questions, feel free to go ahead and join us in the ASUS PC DIY group. It's linked in the uh, description. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free and let me know. Take care. Take it easy. This is a subtle masterpiece dedicated to our demanding gamers. It comes with a robust power delivery, a complete thermal upgrade, and the all-around connectivity. Meet the B650E Aorus Master. To power the latest Ryzen 7000 series processors right out of the box, an all-digital power design that drives up to 105 amps per phase is built to unleash every ounce of performance. For throttle-free access to the PCIe Gen 5 SSD, the M.2 ThermalGuard 3 keeps the device at extraordinarily low temperature even during heavy workloads. Three other M.2 slots are covered by the enlarged heatsink with double-sided thermal pads to dissipate the heat more efficiently. The B650E Aorus Master is engineered on an eight-layer PCB and the circuits are crafted by 2X Copper, giving the processor more headroom for overclocking. We also bring lightning speed to the build with the full compatibility of DDR5 memory. The improved DIMM slots and shielded routing design can now support up to 6600 megahertz and even higher performance with pre-tuned BIOS techniques. A rich selection of connectivity provides extra freedom to DIY enthusiasts for countless possibilities. Two PCIe slots are located in an adequate distance from the first one to avoid interference from the graphics card, so gamers can install PCIe expansion modules at their will. Eight PWM fan headers, with four of them that can be altered for water cooling pumps, maximize the flexibility when it comes to cooling configuration. The B650E Aorus Master empowers all gamers beyond all demands. Now, it's time to master your game.
If you like the video, please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel.